In this lesson, you will understand if a relationship is a function or not a function. We've studied linear relationships for quite some time now, but not all linear relationships are actually functions. So let's learn the difference. If you look at these graphs, they're both linear, but only one of them is a function. It's the one on the left. The graph on the left is both linear and a function. The graph on the right is linear, but it is not a function. So let's find out why. A function is an operation or operators that are typically performed on a set of inputs. So let's take a look at this function machine I have here. If I put the number one into my function machine, it will come out as a five. If I put the number two into my function machine, it will come out as a six. If I put the number three in my function machine, it will come out as a seven. Do you have any idea what this function machine does? Well, if I put in a four, do you know what's gonna come out? That's right, out comes an eight. Now, we have an idea that this function machine adds four to all of my inputs. So we could write the like this. We could say that our function, which requires an input of f, takes that input and adds four. Now, if I go back to my function machine and I put the number one in again, what should come out? That's right, a five should come out. But if a three comes out instead, then we know that this is no longer functioning, okay? So a function performs the same operation, and so if I repeat an input, I should repeat that same output. And if I don't, then it is no longer a function. Again, if you walk up to a soda machine, and you put a dollar in, and out comes one soda, and you put in two dollars, and out comes two sodas, and then three dollars, and out comes three sodas, then you probably would be pretty mad if you put in a dollar and out came zero sodas. So we could say, hey, this machine is not functioning. And we know that because when you repeat an input, you should also be repeating the same output. If not, then it would be completely unpredictable. And that's not functioning. So the definition of a function is a relation, right? A pairing of numbers in which each input or x value is paired with exactly one output or y value. So a function is a relation in which each input is paired with exactly one and only one output. So for every x value you have, then it will always come out with the same y value. In algebra, that definition is printed in this manner. A function is a relation in which each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element of the range. So the word domain is synonymous with x values or inputs, and the word range is a synonym for y values or outputs. You're gonna learn about these four representations today. Ordered pairs and tables, mappings, graphs, and equations. And no matter which format I present it to you, you should be able to tell me if it is a function or not a function. So let's get started. Here's a preview of what the four rules are going to be. And here's an example of what each of these formats look like. Tables, mappings, equations, and graphs. Here we go. If you have a table or a set of ordered pairs, the easiest way to check if a relation is a function is to simply look at the x values in the ordered pairs. Notice I've underlined them with these big heavy red marks. Now, you're not allowed to look at the y values. It really doesn't matter what those numbers are. Those numbers could be the same number every time for all we care, because in a function, the only item that matters is the x value. Check for any repeating x values. If there are no repeats, it passes the test and it is a function. Let's recap. A function has no repeating x values 
with different y values. So I'm going to show you some examples on the next screen. If you'd like to write down this definition in your notes, you can pause the video now. Otherwise, take a look at questions 1 through 4, scan the values, and make a decision. Pause the video and give it a try. All right, it's time to check your answers. Number one, scan all of the x values. If there are no repeats, you are a function. Number two, scan only the x values. If there's a repeat, you are not a function. This one has a repeat, so it is not a function. And this one passes the test. It has no repeating x values. All right, if I take those ordered pairs and I put them in a table instead, I can simply scan down the left-hand column here. Scanning down the left-hand column looking for repeats. If there are no repeats, you have a function. If there is a repeat with a different output, then you're not a function. Pause the video now and determine which one of these are not a function. Okay, let's check your answers. How did you do? Great. Now remember, a function has no repeating x values with different y values. Let's look at the next format. If you take a table and you break it apart, it's sometimes called a mapping. And we generally use these large ovals to show the inputs and who they pair with in the outputs. Now, by definition, a mapping is not allowed to repeat an input value. Because if it does, it simply just takes that value and draws another arrow to a different output. So you can't scan down the list of numbers like you can in a table, but you can certainly look for a repeat with a different x different y value by checking to see if there are two arrows coming off the same input. Here's an example of what I mean. The function on the left has one single arrow coming off of each input. The function not a function on the right because if you look at the input of 4, it can either come out as a 5 or it can come out as a 6. Therefore, it fails the test. Now remember, in your inputs, they can all map to the same output. That's fine. But you can't have an input that maps to two separately different outputs. Again, mappings do not list repeats, but they can show a repeat with a double arrow. If your input has a double arrow, you're not a function. Try these three on your own. Pause the video now. Okay, let's see how you did. Great job. Let's move on to our third format. Remember, a function has no repeating x values if it has different y values. But if I don't give you a list of numbers and all you have is a graph, then what could you use to look for repeats? You can use something called the vertical line test. So if you have a graph and you take your pencil or your finger or any imaginary vertical line and you scan it from left to right and it never touches your blue graph more than one place at a time, then you're a function. Here's a look at some more shapes that are functions. Notice as I scan my imaginary vertical line across this U-shaped graph, I never touch the blue graph more than one point at a time. But when I scan to this sideways V-shaped graph, you'll notice my imaginary line crosses both down here and up there. Therefore, it's not a function. Now this one over here on the far right is a little bit tricky because as I'm scanning, it passes the test, but as soon as I get to this axis here, 
it looks as though there might be two points. But notice that top point. Do you see how it's an open circle? So technically, there is no value there. So this one is pretty tricky, but it passes the test. It never crosses through two points at the same time. That's called the vertical line test. And it actually is looking for repeating x's, right? If I had a point here, it might be the point 2, comma, negative 3. If I have a point there, it might be the point 2, comma, 4, right? Or 2, comma, positive 3. And those are repeating x values. And it's easy to see if the x is repeating because they would line up vertically. All right, if you'd like to take some notes, pause the video now so that you understand how to test a graph to check to see if it's a function. Again, use an imaginary line, your pencil or your finger, and scan each graph from left to right. If you touch the graph in more than one place, like this one here, you touch it on the top and the bottom, you are not a function, you fail the vertical line test. Now this one on the far right is tricky, but it is a function. It never crosses back over itself, right? You can see over here, this graph kind of crosses back over its own path. Why don't you give these problems a try? Pause the video now. All right, ready to check your answers? Let's see how you did. This first two can be a little tricky, but again, as you're scanning your graph, if you cross through more than two points like this one, you're not a function. But as you continue to move, right, you don't get to change. As soon as you cross two points, you automatically fail and the test is over. For question number 15, I pass through only one black point at a time. Never two at the same time. So number 15 actually is a function. All right. How about number 20? How did you do on that question? I know that trips up a lot of students, so let's take a closer look at it. As I'm scanning my graph from left to right, notice that my vertical line tester, right, my purple dashed line here, notice that when I get to the graph, not only do I touch the graph up here at this point, but I touch it at this point, and this point, and this point, and this point, and this point, I actually touch the graph at every single point. Not only does it fail the vertical line test, it fails miserably. It touches at every single point. All right. How do you feel about this vertical line test? If you feel like you want to try a few more, you can pause this video now. Otherwise, we're going to move on to the next format. Okay. Just remember, in order to tell if something is a function, it has to have no repeating x values with different y values. But if you have a graph, you could also say it's not a function because it fails the vertical line test, or it is a function because it passes the vertical line test. So we've talked about three formats already, the ordered pairs and tables, the mappings, and the graphs. The last one is the equations, and there's really not much to practice here. Pretty much every equation you ever see is going to be a function. The only one that's not, the only one that's not, are the ones that are missing the letter y. So if you have a sentence like x equals 5, you're not a function. That's because you are a vertical line. And this is the other one. Now, your function can have exponents in it anywhere, but not on the letter y. So take a look at my examples down here. x has a power of 2, and that's fine. But in example number three, y has a power of two, and that's not okay. So those are the two basic rules. Every equation is a function unless it's missing the letter x or the y has a power of two. Again, pretty much every equation is a function, right? Variables in the denominator are okay. Um, absolute values are okay. Square root signs are okay. Powers of two are okay. The only thing that's not okay is if the y letter is missing, or if the y has a power of 2. Just to recap, we've covered mappings, we've covered tables, 
We've covered graphs, and we've covered equations. I'm going to ask you to do some sorting on your own. I'm going to give you a Google slide that has the word function written on the left and not a function written on the right. I'm going to ask you to take these um, 12 pieces here and drag them into their appropriate columns. Function or not a function. You can find the assignment in the Google Classroom. Good luck.